In the last lecture, we drew the demand curve and talked about its shape. It slopes downward because the law of demand. When the price of a good goes up, the quantity demanded goes down. We also talked about how demand curves can slope down steeply or more gently. This, we learned, is determined by the price elasticity of demand, or how sensitive the quantity demanded is to a change in the price of a good. In this lecture, we ask, what determines when goods are really sensitive to price and when they aren't? There are two different effects that drive this, and we'll discuss both today. The first is the substitution effect, and the second is the income effect. The substitution effect is the extent to which a rise in the price of a good will lead to substitute towards other goods, holding all else constant. If the price of Coca-Cola goes up, for example, you'll buy fewer bottles of Coke because you've switched to Pepsi. The substitution effect will be larger the more substitutable are alternative goods. Consider, for example, insulin. Your body produces insulin to regulate how much sugar is in your blood. But for many people, this process doesn't work well in their body. That's what causes diabetes. So people with diabetes need to take artificial insulin to compensate. Without it, they could die if they eat too much sugar or not enough sugar. And there's no other medicine that works. So what happens if the price of artificial insulin goes up? It seems unlikely that a diabetic facing the risk of death would buy much less artificial insulin if the price goes up. Now consider the alternatives of pizza. Pizza is one of many goods you can consume if you're hungry. As we already talked about, you could eat cookies instead, or you get a burger or fries or just cook at home. The bottom line is that if the price of pizza goes up, you have a lot of other options. So we say that goods like insulin have a small substitution effect because there aren't good alternatives. And goods like pizza have a large substitution effect because there are good alternatives. But no matter the size of the substitution effect, it always leads to a shift away from a good as the price of a good goes up. The second effect is called the income effect, which is the extent to which you consume less of a good when its price rises because that price increase has made you effectively poorer. Now, what do I mean by that? When the price of pizza goes up, in what sense are you poorer? I haven't taken any of your money. But what I've done is to restrict your opportunity set. When the price of pizza goes up, given your income, you can now buy fewer goods. So for example, let's return to the world where you have a budget of $12, pizza costs $2 per slice, and cookies cost $1 each. Recall that in this world, you decided to buy three slices of pizza and six cookies. Now suppose that the price of pizza goes up to $3. Suddenly your choices are more limited. You can no longer get three pizza slices and six cookies. If you want three slices of pizza, now you can only get three cookies before your budget is gone. So you've been made effectively poorer. It's as if your income went down. For the same income, you can get fewer goods. What determines how big the income effect is? There are two pieces. First, the income effect will be bigger the more of your income was spent on a good. Think about housing. If you spend half your income to pay the rent in your apartment and rent goes up by 10%, that is a huge impact on your budget. You'll have to tighten your belt and maybe even find a smaller apartment. But if you're only spending 1% of your income on rent, the rent increase wouldn't affect you very much. You'll keep the apartment. Second, the income effect will depend on how income sensitive is your consumption decision. We call this the income elasticity of demand. Just like the price elasticity of demand measures how the quantity demanded responds to a change in price, the income elasticity of demand measures how the quantity demanded responds to a change in income. For some goods, if you're poor, you won't consume much less because you need them to live. We call these necessities. For other goods, if you're poor, you consume a lot less because you want to focus your resources on necessities. We call these luxuries. So for goods that are necessities, the income effect will be small, but for luxuries, it will be large. In fact, we can go further. For some necessities, the cut in income can actually cause you to consume more of a good. Consider ramen noodle, which is a cheap but tasteless form of nutrition. When you live at home and your parents pay for stuff, you might not eat much ramen. But when you go to college, you have to pay for stuff yourself. Suddenly your income's fallen a lot and you might start consuming a lot more ramen. So getting poorer actually made you consume more of the good. 
We call goods with a negative income elasticity inferior goods. Inferior goods are goods that you consume more of when your income goes down. Think of stuff like ramen or maybe cheap fast food. For most goods, though, you consume less of them when you get poorer. These are called normal goods. Think of stuff like movie tickets or iPhones or nice dinners out. As you get poorer, you cut back on them. To wrap up this lecture, I want to present a table that summarizes everything we've gone through. For a normal good, if the price rises, the substitution effect means you consume less, and the income effect also means you consume less. The total effect is therefore that you consume less. If the price falls, it's the opposite. Both the substitution effect and the income effect mean you consume more. For an inferior good, if the price rises, the substitution effect means you consume less. The good's relative price went up. But the income effect means you consume more. The price went up, you fear poorer, and because it's an inferior good, you consume more. The total effect is ambiguous. It could go either way. For a price drop, it's the opposite. The substitution effect means you consume more. But the income effect means you consume less. You feel richer, and it's an inferior good like ramen noodles, so you buy less of it. The total effect is ambiguous. It could go either way. Remember, the substitution effect is easy. It always says that a price increase causes quantity demand to decrease. The income effect is trickier. It changes directions depending on whether we're talking about a normal good or an inferior good.